Welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Jim Rugg. I'm Ed Piscor. And today we're going to look at Toth, One for the Road. What is this, Jim? Alex Toth, this is a collection of Alex Toth hot rod and car comics that he did for like cartoons and drag tunes and some of the car magazines in the 60s. These are mostly done from like 64, 65 around that time period. Let me ask you this, man. Uh, probably one of his most famous uh, car strips is Hot Wheels. Is that in here or no? It is not. It is okay. not. These are these are a different thing. Hot Wheels being published by DC Comics in the 70s. This might be why he got that job. Dang. Um, but no, these were... Uh, so Peter Miller was the editor of several of these magazines. Wow, look at that motion. This is my favorite Toth book. Toth is one of my favorite cartoonists on Earth, maybe my favorite cartoonist, depending on the day you ask me. And of all the Toth stuff that I have, this is my favorite Toth book, and it's four reasons like this motion. Um, so I have a little bit of information on how this book comes together. The uh, Odd Publishing, Manuel Odd, was a longtime acquaintance of Alex Toth mm. and published several books with Alex Toth, uh, you know, featuring different things from black and white pinups to some of the other strips that may not have been published widely or republished. This is like the worst selling of the Alex Toth books, Find not just by works, him, right? but, but by everyone. Um, this was done towards the end of his, one of his animation stints and he was looking to get back into doing more comics. Oh, so this is an old book. Yeah. 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 The, well, you know, the original work, like I said, mid sixties, um, I think this was printed or, or uh, collected into a book in like the early 2000s. So it's around. Um, I don't know if it's, I think it's out of print from the publisher, but I mean, you know, there, there were enough printed that you can find these if you're looking for them. But Pete Miller is the guy who was doing a lot for these magazines, the, uh, the drag cartoons, the Big Daddy Roth kind of magazines, the, the drag racing culture that was so popular at this time period. And he went out and was trying to get cartoonists to do work for him. You know, Gilbert Shelton's, uh, Russ Manning's, these different California artists that he had, Rick Griffin, that he had access to. But he could only offer them $75 a page. So a lot of people kind of passed up on that. That was a low page rate. But I think Toth needed work, wanted work, um, had burnt bridges at different places. You know, he's famous for, I think, everywhere he leaves is scorched earth behind him. <laughs> um, nobody lives up to his perfectionist standards, and, and usually that, that ends up burning some relationships. So for whatever reason, he took this on, and he did a lot of these. The uh, return is not a lot of money, but creative freedom. Yes. And so he's writing a lot of these. They're very short strips for the most part, one to five pages, and very experimental in style. But the thing that I love about this, the reason it's my favorite book, it's Toth doing humor. Right. And you don't see that very often. But all the Toth, you know, all the things that we think of Toth, great design, great draftsmanship, inventive, creative, original, it's all on display. It's just done in service of humor and speed. <laughs> it's fascinating that, like, I consider him, he's one of the, the few people, you know, like, uh, who can handle pure black and white. You know, there's a handful of people, maybe even with fingers left over. Man, you say it, Ed, and could there be a better example? The, the black being the, sh the shade of the wave coming in that they're riding. like. Yeah, and just even that right there, man. But uh, he is using gray tones, and I saw uh, a mixture. We're looking at zips here, but earlier uh, he was using uh, duo tone, craft tint duo shade paper. Yeah, a companion piece to this might be like the ear, the collection of the Warren work that he did that Dark Horse has put out. It's a hardcover of all of the Warren comics that he made, and they're also black and white and gray, so you see washes and, and screen tones and things like that. The great silhouettes and the great lettering. Like, this is such a, a display of what all the things that he does and does better than everybody else. When I see stuff like this, now he now he did a cup of coffee at the, at the War Books with uh, Harvey Kurtzman, mm -hmm. and... I, I don't know if he would admit it or if the, it, I mean, they definitely are contemporaries, but that that's like, there's Kurtzman stuff in there, man. Speaking of inventive layouts, wow, big daddy, where we're getting letters for your page layouts. Who like also throw away characters that are better than most of the stuff that I'm seeing in like a Marvel DC character design. Straight up. Like, no, wow, isn't it crazy? That's... Nobody thought to do this. Like, like I, I've never seen that kind of composition it's like of course like why wouldn't you do that yeah so i'm going to kind of flip through this as we talk a little bit 
These are broken down into, um, like, the EC comics would have their horror hosts. Right. There were some ongoing characters in some of these. And so I think that's how they're arranged chapter-wise. But, man, like, the silhouettes are so simple and yet perfectly effective. You know, like, this is all silhouettes. Four panels in a row, and they all read perfect. I take a lot of notes from this kind of book. Yeah. I think all the time about shapes, you know, like if it, if, if the shape works in silhouette, it doesn't have to be a silhouette, but that's your test. You know, whenever you're laying out a composition or whatever, is it a good composition? Would that character read if it was all filled in black? And then composition, just great, great compositions. I always think movies could do more of this where they mask bits of, of screens for like different scenes or whatever. Like it doesn't all have to be all exposed you know you could you could have crops and, and the best, weird shapes yeah the best cinematographers can definitely put some negative space to to, to shine cement shoes look at all these textures he's doing everything this is a gangster comic in the middle you know it's 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 he's being paid to do a car comic but this is a gangster bootleggers with their with the cars of that era he's so plugged into this culture which i don't even know that he is particularly interested in. Yeah, like he knows a little something because like he called himself Big Daddy Toth. Yeah, yeah, he's not, you know, he, he does whatever uh, amount of education I guess you need to get there. Skateboard, not the only skateboard uh, that we'll see in this collection either. Oh, this is before they had the urethane wheels too, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that dude's heading for danger. Hit a pebble with your toast. Engines, it's all believable. Again, with the motion. It's it's great motion. Like when I was working on that running comic, I would just go through and like make studies of like how do you how do you make something look fast, you right. know, in a, in a static drawing. And this stuff is a pretty good teacher for that. The lettering, though, I can't stop looking at this stuff. I just keep going through this book. I've had this book for fifteen years, and I continue to just it, it's all fresh. You know, it's that overkill. Whenever we go through artist editions, you'll see bags under my eyes by the time we get to the end of an artist edition because it's so dense and rich remember the uh, opening of fargo it's a crane shot going through the parking lot i always love the cone brothers because they have these inventive compositions it's this this is the same shot you know it's uh it's just inventive man you think of all of like we've been looking at static cartoons great silhouette we've been looking at static uh you know like comic strips and it's very static a lot of the contemporary comic strips of just talking heads same thing repeated each panel these are six panel grids we're dealing with a square and yet every single one is completely different yeah yeah it's very humbling man because it's like all right man you have no excuse no the compositions you know toth was a was an artist who i would hear about as being great and i would see some of his work and think that's yeah i get it you know that looks really good or whatever but the more time I would spend with his work, the more it became clear the the next level that he's at. And compositions is probably, you know, you could hone in on one or two of his skills that he really shines at, and, and that'd be it. That'd be all you'd need to improve as a cartoonist. And the one thing that I just come back to again and again is the compositions. They're so inventive. They're so perfect. They're so clear. You know, the mark of a... That used to be an important part of a cartoonist's skill set is that clarity and being able to read the drawings at, at a speed that made sense for the storytelling. And all of his visual inventiveness doesn't compromise the clarity at all. Not only rain, but you feel the wind blowing that rain. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? This is such an underrated, like the fact that this was like the least seller of all of his work. This is the one to go out and find everybody. I am telling you as somebody who has a big shelf of Toth books, this is as good as any of them. All the different textures in the lettering. Oh, man. Tiring me out here. <laughs> Love seeing the snow. Every, every cartoonist has some version of snow. <laughs> Even being inventive with the stupid Christmas story. Yeah. You know, of him having to, to, to parachute out of the sled whenever the sled fails. Yeah, it, it is, I mean, like, what I get from this is just, like, such a sense of fun, but in, with everything that I know about Toth, is the process to get here was the exact opposite. Yeah, these, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned fun, because he is, uh, the personality around Toth, you know, he's, he's known as such a cantankerous guy, um, so many relationships that seem to, 
you know, people would have relationships with him for a long time, and then something would go wrong, and that'd be it. It'd be like, you're written off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He wasn't like, he wasn't looking for... You know, he's known as a perfectionist, and that's another piece that is sort of antithetical to fun and enjoying yourself. And I think that's probably part of what I what I love here. I love his work, and to see that sense of joy on display in the work... Um, I don't know. It feels, it, you know, it makes me happy to see this and think like, yeah, he had to be enjoying this, right? Like, God, race, the race, why aren't there race comics? Yeah, the, like, the thing is, like, like if you're a perfectionist, that means you're also a control freak. And this is the one thing he could control, you know? Right. So so it's like, well, yes, like, this is where he's having fun. Yeah, maybe that's it, too. You know, Pete Miller hires him for this, pays him almost nothing, and then gets the hell out of the way. And, and... I'm sure the paying him almost nothing may not have been a good part, but the getting out of the way and letting him do what he wants to do and be creative and and far out, that part I think at least, you know, that that pro probably appealed to him on a very major way. Love all these different body types. So these are like drag a team of drag racing women, you know, kind of like the hot rodders of that era. Um, there's just a lot of great great stories in here, and he does everything well. There's a cockpit scene that every time I see a shot like this, it reminds me of Frank Miller's Dark Knight Returns when we see Batman in the uh, in the Batmobile tank. Um, very different compositions, you know. But is this slot car racing? <laughs> <laughs> About that, Greeny McGo is one of these uh, one of these recurring like the the hosts. Yes, you know, in a series of these things, photo collage. How about that for? Uh, bringing in some new technique here. Maybe that's what he and Kirby were talking about at that <laughs> one uh, barbecue. Could be. Could be. It's a, it's, a, it's another one of... It reminds me, we've been talking about Bill Watterson and how he's constantly trying to reinvent, you know, visually, do something new, do something different, change it from the last strip, and that's something else that feels apparent here, is a, is a great visual artist who is constantly trying to not repeat himself which is another advantage of seeing these in a collection where you can really see them next to each other and be like, wow, he's using different materials, different approaches. These are squared off word balloons, which seems like a nothing, but it's still him, tr you know, sort of doing something different. Composition wise, these remind me of like the EC comics where your caption would be at the top. And then, you know, the art was kind of that under piece. His, his lettering is reminiscent of like the Ben Oda um, lettering that would have been in the, in the Kurtzman books. Look at that hand. <laughs> It's ridiculous. <laughs> Never one line out of place when it comes to the figures and stuff. Like, yeah. even that weird hand. No extra lines at all. And the ability to go from this kind of a cartoon to a very realistic uh, Jeep going through the, the jungle. Tarzan. These are funny, man. There was uh, There's a lot of gags about putting the tiger in your tank, which I think was Exxon. It was one of the gas companies. You know, mm. that was their... That was like their... Uh, their Mad Men fucking ad slogan. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it, it comes up a couple times, you know, like, again, trying to think of Toth channeling what does he know about cars. Look at this. The clown around caper. This is kind of a... It's a getaway car, right? It's a gang of bank robbers. This is a crime comic masquerading as, as in, in car magazines, but you get to see him applying that noir sensibility to the compositions, to the shadows. Great character design. Like, that guy's totally a cartoon... Again, Jamie Hewlett. Oh, totally. A name that comes up regularly, but does anybody do it better than this? And then you get the dynamic of running out of the bank. The ability to switch from this cartoonish face to a much more like action shot of guys shooting at each other, running out of the bank. Yeah, he has a lot of tools. That is a short list of people that are going to be able to do that. I swiped some Doom buggies from him this week. It's it's interesting that uh, this, this strip in particular uh, must not... Like, this is definitely printed from the magazine page, man. It's a little rougher. Yeah. And it adds, actually, to the tone of the story. I don't even know what the hell this is. Yeah, he's like, he's like now he's inventing vehicles. Yeah, yeah Concept totally. cars for Ford and shit. Inventing vehicles and then just throw away characters that look great. Yeah. This is after uh, a lot of time spent doing his animation designs, known for the character designs. That's another skill that's on display in most of these stories are... Characters that stand out, characters that work in silhouette, characters that look different than the other characters in the story. There's a one reference that we get. <laughs> yes. More skateboarding, though, than in building the giant skateboard. Always the good gag is the uh, objects that are, that are bigger than they should be. Whether you're shrinking down characters or building the giant skateboard for the, uh, the oversized character. This is a nice one for grayscaling. The way the grayscale is used in this, I think, is very different. You can see, like, his white mustache, white eyebrows, 
where he's uh, not even using a line or you know a line hold for the a color hold for those. And can't rest on his laurels. Has to make the uh, the title piece as, as intricate and elaborate as every other part. Incredible. Varying your gutters. This is just a thick, heavy line with no hard outline around the panels. Next one, more traditional panel outlines. Even turning the panel on its side. You know, it's just every piece of this can be used and examined, and he's going to play with all of it. Also great at drawing women. So we're going to see some of the uh, some girls in this story. Although this is an incredible story of a car crash. If you get into any kind of like the uh, old racing documentary stuff, all those guys died in, in fires. Like Fuck. it's dangerous, man. You know, like it, it was a real deadly sport. Yeah, and you know, you beautiful bring... girls. Like he could draw everything. Yeah, yeah. The the heel lit part with the with fireball. I mean, like he definitely must have been looking at Toth. Yeah, I was gonna say if, if you love fireball like I do. <laughs> This is a perfect companion piece. That's awesome. Wonderful, wonderful. Again, how reminiscent of the Dark Knight cockpit scene. And I mean, this shot's common. You see it in film and stuff. I'm not saying he invented it, but it looks great. And uh, that round motif is really good for a story with wheels flying everywhere and, and seeing that round motif. And this is that thing that you... that How to Draw Comics the Marvel Way tried to teach us about dragging a, a razor across your ink. And and uh, he put it to use throughout this in, in to really, really good fashion, man. But uh, good luck trying that. Visual inventiveness, man. It's one more technique that he can use to make make this picture look different than this picture. Yes, and, and also, like, the the big takeaway that we can all easily take away from this is, like, you want speed. Rule one, get the tires off the ground. I was going to say the same thing, and I thought that's where you were going with this when you said how to draw comics the Marvel way, is that idea of how do you make this dynamic... You're damn right, get the tires off the ground. That doesn't occur to most people that are making a drawing of a car going down the road. Yeah, but yeah. if you want to put some, some oomph behind it, there you go. Very simple, very effective. Um, this is a two-page story called The Wheel to Win, and we see his cars breaking down, losing tires, crashing, and he's carrying it across the, uh, the finish line, Flintstone style. It's super basic, simple. From the very get-go to the end, it's one line. It's one direction. It's, it's one idea. It reminds me of that movie 1917 where it's like the premise is set up in, in 10 seconds. This guy's got to deliver a message across World War I battlefield arena to save his brother and a bunch of other soldiers. Great. Start, start the cameras then because I understand what's happening. And a lot of these stories are that way. That's the surprising part that we can't communicate flipping through the book. These are good stories. And they're short stories, which very few people do short stories anymore, let alone effectively. And you don't think of Toth as this great writer. These are good stories. You know, we've we've had the conversation many, many times, and like, what what is the great Toth comic? And and we were looking at it wrong because we were looking for like an issue of a DC comic. But I think you've uh, you've unpacked the uh, the like the great Toth book that everybody should have their hands on. Look at how nuts the cartoon drawings on these are. Yeah, would you say this might be like late period? I have no. This might be. I don't know because I can't picture him like rushing to deliver something. And he's still trying things visually, you know, so like parts of this look drawn quickly and we don't see the elaborate grayscaling or screen tones, but it is, it does look like it's drawn fast. So I don't, I don't know. I don't know, uh, you know, why, how to chalk that up or what, what parts are deliberate decisions and what isn't showing off all of his lettering ability. This could be the great Toth comic. It's certainly, like I said, this is my favorite Toth book and I've got all those IDW beautiful, those are wonderful, by the way, everybody, if you're looking for Toth. Those are the best things to get, probably. But if you can find this, you will be a better cartoonist by the time you get to the end of this book than you were when you started. This is a funny story, too. Crossover. These are characters from other strips. So, like, a war strip, a PI strip, and somehow they find themselves in here. <laughs> They're in the wrong strip, and the car goes racing by. <laughs> it's clever, man. The stories are as inventive as the artwork is. This was always my nightmare, and I think it was from seeing Convoy at a drive-in whenever... I was real little, and the car gets pinned between, like, the two tractor trailers. Ah, uh, right, yeah. <laughs> of course, I would have nightmares from that. So, I'm thrilled to get to show this one off. I've been wanting to uh, talk about Alex Toth for a while. The bibliography is clutch. Yeah. yeah, you can see the dates, too. You know, 63 to 66, I think, is probably the two. 67, so 
Yeah, mid-60s, like I said, he was looking to do more comics. I think this just happened to be right place, right time, and we all get the benefit from it. So Alex Toth, one for the road. Do yourself, do your eyeballs a favor. They will thank you for this. Yeah, heck of a book, man. I'm glad to, that we got a chance to check it out, dude. Should we get out of here, though? Yes. All right, Favors, like, follow, subscribe the YouTube channel. Hit the bell icon, and we'll let you know when the next vids are available. Sign up for our e-newsletter below. Pick up t-shirts and merchandise at the links below. Jim, I'm going to go draw, try to figure out uh, how Toth works. Uh, it's lesson one, learn how to draw a car. Give, <laughs> give them the marching orders. Read more comics.